Hello, Holger. Hello, Magdi. Mm. Thank you for this beautiful meditation. Um, my chest feels warm. I feel extremely comfortable. Is this a state? And do words and questioning and asking disturb this? Or anyway, it comes and goes. Well, if we're not holding on to anything, we notice we notice uh, the warmth or the the peace, or we notice tranquility. We notice the sunshine. We notice hunger. We notice the warmth of the body. There is nothing which we are holding on to that we're saying, okay, you know, let me hold on to that. Let me see how we can return to that. Let me see how we can save that. It just makes me wonder. Uh, so this is my normal state? And there is... There is no disturbance. There is just what appears, what is. If I'm holding on to something and somebody or something is coming to take it away from me or it's slipping away, there is a disturbance, you see. Mm -hmm. But there is activity doesn't disturb uh, the the peace of being doesn't disturb uh, me, doesn't disturb me yeah. when I'm uh, open to whatever, you know, happens. And maybe something happens where I need to do something. I need to respond. Okay, so I respond. W what is the disturbance? What is it that's being disturbed, you say? What is it that's being disturbed? There is nothing or nobody that is there to be disturbed. There's no personal self, no personal entity in there that is behind the rampart, behind the walls, or making sure that nobody or disturbs it. Is that the actual state? Yes. Our this ordinary consciousness, this ordinary awareness is God's awareness. Because there's no personal awareness. There is no person somewhere behind the scene that is the owner of awareness. <laughs> there's no owner to awareness. You can, you can, this body mind named Magdi owns this car. I have the title to the car. But we're not talking about the body mind, the body mind. Uh, is an event in time and space. Is a part of the universal unfolding. Thoughts, sensations, perceptions, brain activity, heartbeat, uh, uh, gravitational forces. Uh, you know, the, the cosmic rays. One of that is is bodies interacting you know with all of that but i i means awareness consciousness awareness this the reality that perceives the reality that is and knows it is that's the true self that's your true self that's the that's the only self there is the thought may appear saying Oh, well, this or that, there is another self somewhere out there. Okay, I mean, that's just a thought appearing, saying that, but ex experientially, we always experience, 100% we have an experience of I, right? We don't have a 95% experience of I. Our experience of I is 100%, right? And it's always been the case. And yeah, one could say it's this ordinary awareness, this ordinary 
reality, this ordinary But this ordinary mind is God's mind. It's extraordinary. In that we're talking about reality. That awareness is, is, awareness is, and awareness is self-aware. And I am that. I means I is this awareness. It isn't an I apart from that, from that totality, from that reality. So I slash reality is one word. I dash or I slash reality. So it's, one could say it's ordinary, but also we could say it's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, right now it feels like elevated, like it feels special. Yes, because consciousness yeah. is a reflecting onto itself. It's like, wow, I mean, it's like you're in, you're in, you're in the gold mine. I mean, you're you, you, you arrive the vein of gold. You know, you're digging. You find you, you, yes, it's elevated because consciousness is reflecting upon itself. But I, I'm naked. I have no pockets where I can put in the gold. <laughs> you are the gold. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. That's it. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, you know, when we do the meditations, there is there's exercises. There it's a when you do the meditation we it's a consciousness reflecting upon itself and there is this this sense of it's beyond words. I mean really yeah, yeah. words. Um But we, in life, you know, we have to go to work. We have to go to the market. We've got to, you know, go to take care of the kids. Whatever we have, so then we do that. See, and that's that's perfect and fine. It's, there's no, uh, we're not getting attached. You know, it's it's, it's a, somehow. Uh, we are unveiling in the meditation, we unveil, we thin out the veil, the me veil, the veil of separation is thinned out. And so we have a, a direct experience of our true self, the raw experience of our true self, which is cannot be put in words. And nothing disturbs that. Or initially, it may seem, you know, when we start years ago when we started it seemed that oh when I go back to work when I go back to life or at the end of the retreat or at the end of the meditation everything gets disturbed but in time we realize no it's, it's just it's that same this peace is there in the midst of activity it's important to uh to arrive experientially. And it's not like this is the goal, no, but to, to be open to no disturbance in the midst of activity. There is, okay, the body needs sometimes to do some things that are maybe difficult for the body, or it's okay. It's, there's no disturbance because there's nobody being disturbed, you see. So there is an understanding that are, that comes along with with the peace, the understanding about our true self, about peace itself. And there's nothing you you really can do to avoid this understanding to establish itself. You, you cannot. You cannot. 
Uh, this is why sometimes it is said, you just all you need to do is to show up. You don't need to do anything in the in, in our meetings. Nothing. I'm speechless. Thank you, Magdi.